How's it going guys, James96 here back with a brand new Minecraft command module and today guys we are checking out an awesome module made by Danaphanus of the Oath Brothers, a link will be in the description to his detailed video which will be coming out soon, but today guys we are checking out the Blast Miner module and look at it, it's looking awesome, so let's get started. Okay, so the first thing you need to do, as always, with these Minecraft command modules is you need to install it. So in the description below, as soon as I get hold of it, will be a schematic download, which you can install into any world. This is what the schematic will look like, just like so, and you can just put it in a bedrock bedrock box down at the bottom of your world and never have to see it again. It doesn't have to be at a certain height or anything. Um, if it's not down there when you first look, don't worry, just check back in a day or so's time. Just wait for Dan to send me the links so that I can put them in the video and I will do as soon as I've got them. But if they're already there, then he's already done it and you don't need to worry. So yeah, all you need to do is install this into your world, nice and simple, and it's even labelled what everything does. It's very well optimised and spent a lot of time sorting out the timings and everything to make sure it's not going too quick or, you know, overworking the... Uh, system and as you can see it's got an item hopper clock which makes everything run nice and smoothly and then all you need to do is add the following module uh, following objectives blast miner blast miner b1 and blast miner b2 but as you can see I've already added them and it already exists so we don't have to install them again but that's something that you will have to do uh, very simple to do and yeah nice and easy so let's get on to how to actually make a blast mine I'm sure that's what you're all interested in and it's actually relatively cheap to do not so cheap that it's going to be overpowered but cheap enough that it's not going to be too tough to do so we actually need one more redstone torch I obviously missed one off there so all you need to do is place a minecraft hopper minecraft minecart down <laughs> that's a tough one to say apparently and then you just access the inventory, put 32 TNT in the middle slot, put two iron blocks either side and a redstone torch either side. I think that's a fair recipe. I think the TNT is going to be hard to get. At the moment it doesn't drain the TNT, in the future it may do. You still tinker around with it for a bit. Let me know in the comments what you think about everything to do with this module, if you'd improve it in any way, so that I can pass it on to Dan for further improvements. But anyway, let's go on to how to operate this. So... The blast miner is actually very easy to operate, all you need is a redstone torch and then each of these slots has a different mode. You've got south, north, east and west which is the directionals for what you saw down below at the start of the video and then you've got a passive mode which we'll get onto later. But first of all let's just demonstrate, so south is in this direction and you'll see it just goes along if there's nothing to break it doesn't break anything. North is in this direction and as you'll see it'll find something to break here so it will break it and then it'll just carry on going and then if we go to east which is this way it goes nicely in that direction and then west is in the opposite direction that is west yes okay awesome and then you just take it out and it's as simple as that now it's deactivated these are also invulnerable so if you're in game mode uh, zero you can't actually break these which is useful obviously it's needed for the um to stop the explosions breaking the minecart but it's very useful just don't leave it running too long although I did just test it and it seems to stop at the edge of the loaded chunks and then it will stop until you reactivate it which seems fair enough I think that's a good way of doing it but you can't just let it run off for infinity <laughs> but anyway let's go down and check out how these work in a mining environment because I'm sure that's what you guys are mostly interested in so to set these guys off it's very simple all you need to do is put a redstone torch in one of their slots and as you'll see they just go on you can have them side by side and they work absolutely fine you may hear a hissing sound that is because it's actually using creeper explosions first of all and the reason it's two blasts is because it has a first blast to uh, break any ores and then the second blast is to break stone and that's basically because ores have a lower blast resistance than stone and by having a lower explosion first you prevent loss of any ores so you'll see here it'll just do it it just did one explosion you might not be able to hear the difference but as you can probably tell this is very loud if I go into my sounds blocks is at 3% at the moment if I turn it up to sort of a regular 35% it's absolutely mental you can't keep it on that for very long so let's turn that back down but I think that's a cool little feature I mean it is blast mining after all it should be loud 
and then to stop these guys it's actually a very simple little system that you have to do you can just put two hoppers in a row this is something I figured out there's no set way of doing it but this is a very simple solution you just lay out two hoppers like that because there's two of them and all you're going to do is catch the redstone torch because you've laid down a basic filter and you'll see this guy should just stop perfectly on top good it worked and then this guy should stop on top of the other one and you'll see there'll be an extra redstone torch in there so it's very easy to stop these guys from going and yeah there's basically loads of different stuff that you can do with them if we can get this guy back going again if I take out all of this stuff and send him off in the other direction so if we send him off this way is he gonna go? oh no he won't have gone because there's this hopper here let's place down a redstone torch next to it to deactivate the hopper and then send him off in the opposite direction so there's loads of little cool things this guy does so if he is going along and he sees a hole he will just go down it I believe and carry on he's not quite aligned with the block oh no sorry he has the um, he has a self-preservation instinct so he'll actually stop there that's exactly how it works and then if I place the blocks back he will carry on if he sees something that he can't break like obsidian for example it can't break obsidian then he will go over it and carry on as hopefully demonstrated here so he'll try and break it he obviously can't break it but it won't stop him he'll carry on going and if I put two here it will do the exact same thing he'll try and break it he'll kind of jump into the block and then he'll carry on going he also has a self-preservation instinct against lava, or at least he should do. So if we place some lava down here, we'll test exactly how this works. This is still a bit finicky, and it might not work because this lava is moving. But he should stop himself around the edge of lava. Okay, I might have done that wrong. <laughs> I'm still playing with this myself. But as you can see, the lava doesn't deter the um, minecart. He will keep going through it then. And as you can see, it's now breaking blocks again. Another important thing to point out is obviously these minecarts have limited inventory and as you can see at the moment it's picking up a load of cobblestone, uh, slowly picking it up and it will pick up this coal here in a second and you can see there it just did the smaller blast because it didn't need to break any stone but as you can see it has very limited inventory slots so what you can do is you can actually load these minecarts so that they only pick up certain types of blocks so if you for example just wanted to pick up the ores then you could go like so and then obviously you'd want maybe coal and diamonds in the slot to make sure it picks up those and not for example stone which you don't necessarily want uh, especially when you've got this guy running for a long amount of time so we got coal if we put uh, gold in there iron in there and diamonds in here then it's not going to pick up any stone at all it will just leave it on the ground though it won't destroy it because it gives these blocks a invulnerable tag so these guys can't be destroyed for five minutes until they despawn but you can pick them up as usual and then if we put for example some diamond ore in the system around here what you'll see happen is at the moment it's on one diamond what it will do is it will collect the diamonds because we programmed it to do so and you can see perfectly works all of the diamonds are collected and you even get the XP if you're standing here but let's uh, make a little thing to stop the minecart so like I said all you have to do is redstone torches and a hopper and all you have to do is just go in this direction oh it's actually stopped itself because it found a block which it stopped on see like so so that's another way of doing it the only time that that doesn't work is if the minecart is perfectly aligned with the block. You'll see here it isn't perfectly aligned with the block, but if you set it up with it on a uh, rail, then it will be perfectly aligned. So you need to be careful of that. So if I just demonstrate that quickly now for you. So if we get the iron blocks, just to recap the recipe for you, and some, oh, stole my iron blocks, some TNT, and that's pretty much all you need. So then you just put... 32, 1, 2, 1, 2, and redstone torches like so. And then if we get that going, I believe in this direction, we'll be fine. Okay, yeah, so it's perfectly aligned at the moment. So you'll see that what happens is it doesn't actually drop down. Well, it won't stop, sorry, it will carry on going. It just drops down and carries on. So if you want to stop that from happening, all you have to do is just nudge it slightly into the side of a block. I'm not doing this particularly well. Uh, let's get out for a second so if we nudge it here 
Okay, we're struggling to nudge this. <laughs> it can be done. There you go. So this is now obviously not perfectly aligned. I bet I've managed to perfectly align it with another block now. But as you can see, yeah, there you go. It's not perfectly aligned, so it now stops on the edge of the block. So I think the hopper system is a lot more secure. It just means that you know it's going to do, it's going to work because even if the block isn't aligned, it will still stop on this hopper just because the hoppers have a bigger catch radius. Uh, so if the minecart's even slightly over the hopper, it will stop it. So that is basically the system there. Let's just stop the rain because what we're going to do now is we're going to check out another mode of the um, blast miner, which is the passive mode. Yes, this is partic of particular interest to me. Uh, there's lots of stuff you can do with this. So let's first of all demonstrate how this works. So basically, all you do is you put a redstone torch in the last slot and you may think that nothing happens. But if you have a block, not at this level, but if you have it two blocks above, you'll see it gets broken by the hopper, uh, by the blast miner. And if you place it right, then it will all funnel down into the blast miner. So as you can see, it will break anything at that height, which is perfect for multiple reasons, which I'll try and demonstrate a couple now just in case you guys can't work out functionality for it or can't think of any off the top of your head. Here's a couple of ideas I've come up with already. So first one is completely automated cobblestone farming. So you make yourself a little bog standard cobblestone generator here with the lava and the water. And then you put a blast uh, miner just in here, which is actually labeled blast miner. I've only just realized that. And then all you have to do as well is just set up a filter system, just a regular filter system. And what that will do is it will allow it to work uh, I obviously haven't got that lined up properly. Anyway, so this should work just fine. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our redstone torch and we're going to place it in the last slot here. And if we go at the top, you'll see as soon as the cobblestone gets generated, probably quicker than it's generated, it's actually getting broken and it's funneling down into the system. And you can probably see. Can you see? It's going very quickly through the system. It's quite hard to catch it all. Oh, there you go. It's all coming through. So you see it's all ending up in the chest here. Obviously, it depends how quickly the actual cobblestone generator works. It's the only thing that's slowing you down. But it's collecting all of the cobblestone. It's got very good rates. Occasionally, it will drop one when it comes to cobblestone. But it's completely effective with ores, which is the main thing. So that works perfectly. And then as something else to demonstrate... If we get rid of the water and the lava, if you set this up to a tree farm, so if you get some wood going, you can actually make it just work just like a um, wither tree farm, except obviously without having to have a wither in your world, which is always dangerous. So you just set this up to the output and say a piston pushes the oak wood along into that slot and it gets broken straight away. And I think what happened there is because it was moving into place as it happened um yeah not entirely sure how that works we you'd have to experiment with it a bit more but obviously if it's placed at the right time it will get exploded perfectly some stuff to do with timings probably has to get done i imagine what happened there was as it tested for the block it was sort of halfway in between so that's why it broke up broke up a larger area but if you had obsidian all around this which is all you need it's only because i've got a nicer looking setup here but if you had obsidian for example and just placed it on all of these blocks here then you're not going to have any problems because the obsidian has a high enough blast radius that nothing is going to break. And you can have it like so, or even with the gap in the middle. And then you could have it push into place. And as you can see, it just explodes like so. And it's actually breaking multiple blocks at the same time, which is perfect. So that's a really good system. And it's not going to break the blocks underneath. So you could have all of these as hoppers probably, and it would still work very nicely. But anyway, let's go on to one final thing, which I want to show off in this episode which is you can actually use it for mob farming so if we just let's clear our inventory if we grab these spawn eggs and turn this thing on so as you can see uh, all you have to do let's build up a few mobs in it first actually so if you just put a few mobs in now this is out of glass so there's a chance some of these will go flying out the side but I just wanted to demonstrate so these guys are just going to burn but if you put a redstone torch into enable pass mode you'll see that these guys are getting wrecked and this guy will just keep going because it detects the water so it's going to keep going but because of the water it's not going to do any damage to the surrounding area that's another thing you can do with the tree farm is just put water around 
Uh, obviously, I haven't spent a lot of time experimenting with this. Dan showed me this design yesterday, so I'm trying to get a video out nice and quickly because this is actually installed on the Kplex SMP server, which I'm going to be playing around with this a lot more on there. But I wanted to show off the design quickly first. So, just one more time, you'll see that as you put these guys in, they will get blown up by the system. Obviously, only one issue is that they get flown so high up in the air that they can get um, away. But yes, that is pretty much all I have to demonstrate from this system. Lots of cool stuff. And, I mean, it looks awesome, doesn't it? Look at the explosion radius. It just looks so cool. All from this one little system. And, obviously, like I said, you can have loads of these running at the same time with nothing to worry about. They clear out huge areas underground. I had one of these, uh, two of these going for a little while, maybe like, three four minutes just whilst I was setting up a system and they got all the way over here it's actually to the edge of the chunks uh, which were loaded which is insane insanely far so this has got loads of potential for stuff you can do with it Dan is looking to add more functionality possibly at a later date so this module is really coming along nicely but anyway guys that is all I have got time for for today uh, please remember to go check out Dan's channel I will put a link up on screen in just a moment to his channel so if you want to check his channel out for a more in detailed video as to how he worked out all of the commands and stuff and everything to do with that then you can do check out the download link in the description as soon as it's there to check this out for yourself in your own world and play around with it show me any designs that you make comment below with any improvements and i will see you next time bye bye